Real quick, the only ask I could ever have of you guys is to help spread the word so we can help more women lose body fat, build muscle, reach their goals, and feel insanely confident. And the only way we can do that is if you rate, review, and share this podcast. So the single thing I ask for you to do is if you could leave a review. It will take you 10 seconds and it will mean the absolute world to me and may change the world of someone else. The reverse dieting requires your patience. And I know none of you like to hear that word because you want results fast and you want results like yesterday. Well, newsflash when it comes to fitness and you getting the transformation that you want with your body composition, that requires a hell of a lot of patience. So I can't stress this one enough, the reverse dieting requires patience. One of the biggest mistakes that I see is people increasing their calories too fast because they're excited to eat more. Hey you guys, what is going on? Welcome back to the Macro Hour, or if this is one of your first or few episodes, welcome to the show with Nikki Stott, co-founder of Warrior Babe. And on this podcast, we talk about mindset, methodologies, and tactics that will help you lose body fat, build muscle, be strong, and feel insanely confident. I am your host, Nikki Stott, and welcome to today's episode, episode number 197. We are three episodes away from 200 and I have a really fun 200 episode for you guys. Um, but today I am super stoked to talk about this topic with you guys. And I just wanna give a big freaking shout out to you guys on Instagram that filled out my little question box that from time and time again, I like to drop on my story. What are some you know, topics, concepts around fitness that you want to learn about that are worthy of long answers and me diving into the depths of it that I can bring to the podcast. Periodically, I drop those on my on my Instagram story with a little question box. And you guys gave me some really good freaking topics. So I've listed out, I think like I took maybe three or four of them and branched them out in, this is one of them into, and then into future episodes as well. But this one, I was super stoked when I got this question box. So whoever did this, um, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I'm really, I feel like this episode is going to bring a lot of value for those of you that are super interested in this topic. And that is around reverse dieting. And I feel like many of you guys have heard about this concept methodology, way of doing fitness, nutrition side of things. I don't know what you want to call it. I'm just going to call it a concept. I know many of you guys have heard about this, but might not fully understand what reverse dieting is. So I'm going to dive into that. that I'm going to dive into what it really is, how it works, how to do it right, some common misunderstandings about it, some common mistakes when it comes to it. And just, I hope, like I said, like I I love this shit, so I could jive on this all day long, and I'm really excited this topic was brought to my attention because this is worthy of a long answer, and this is worthy of probably 30 minutes talking about this stuff, breaking it down into what I hope you guys will be able to understand and be able to apply it wherever you need it in your life. So again, thank you so much for the person that dropped this in my questions box. Um, so if you've ever gone through like a period of um, calorie restriction, whether it be that you focus on wanting fat loss, weight loss, you've been in competition prep or any other reason, reverse dieting could be your key. Actually, not could be. It is your key to maintaining your progress without entirely wreaking havoc on your metabolism and or losing all of the progress that you've made in those phases, whether it be fat loss, competition prep, weight loss, any of the other reasons that you've been in a calorie restriction. But, or not but, however, there are a lot of misconceptions about this topic, this concept. And I'm going to clear that up today. I want to talk about, you know, share some common mistakes people make, make along the way, common misunderstandings that people have about this. Um... And really just kind of point blank it, like say it for point blank what this concept is and how you can go about it and how you can be successful with it. So first, let me just talk about, if you guys don't know what reverse dieting is, 
Essentially, it's like a gradual increase of your calories after a period of being in a calorie restriction, whether it be fat loss that you've been focusing on with your coach for the last three, four months and you've been slowly decreasing your calories or whether it be that you've been in a competition prep for the last 12 weeks, whatever it may be, reverse dieting is a gradual increase of calories over a period of time after said calorie restriction phase. The goal here is to slowly bring your metabolism back up to speed after being in a caloric deficit, which will help you to maintain the fat loss or weight loss, whatever you've, the goal you've been striving for while at the same time increasing your caloric intake. And why is this important? Hear me out. When you diet for an extended period of time, your metabolism adapts to that lower caloric intake. And this is called metabolic adaptation. And this is when your body basically gets really, really, really used to functioning at those fewer calories. Whether it be that you've been in fat loss and you've dropped down from 2,000 calories to 1,500 calories, maybe even more to push to see how far you can get it to go. Same with competition prep. But basically, when you're in that state, you're like, just surviving and like adapting your body to survive in those tough conditions. Like you can't eat 1200 calories for the rest of your life. And if you've ever been in competition prep, you've ate around a thousand calories, 1100 calories. And you are just every single day waking up, be like, the only thing I have to do today is get to the end of the day where I can go back to sleep. Trust me. I've been there. I have felt that I know that in and out of my body. I know what that feeling feeling feels like. So at that, you, you know, you, you've been at, you've been functioning at those lower calories. Same goes like if like maybe not as drastic as competition prep, but you've been a fat loss and you've been focusing on that for the last four months. You've slowly been bringing it down, bringing it down, bringing it down in calories. And you get to the point where you're like, oh, I'm tired. I'm run down. I'm irritable, right? This is like, you're, you're, you're surviving. <laughs> you're just surviving at this point. And it's not ideal Um, When you're trying to maintain results and return to uh, a normal diet without gaining any fat, like you being in that state is not ideal for a long period of time because you can't survive for a long period of time at 1100, 1200, 1300 calories. And at that point, your body's adapted to this and you want to be able to, you know, come back up to a normal diet, eat more food without gaining all that weight back, basically without wreaking havoc on your metabolism. So reverse dieting allows you to um, to gradually reinduce, reintroduce these calories without shocking your system. It gives your metabolism this time to adjust and to help you avoid the rapid fat gain, the rapid weight gain that can happen when you jump straight from a calorie deficit to a calorie surplus, which so many people freaking do, especially if you've been in a calorie restriction for so long and you've been in this low state and you've been just surviving. All you want to think about is food. This is why competition prep come out of competition. People come out of competition prep and gain back 25 pounds. How do I know that? Because I was one of them (laughs) and your body is basically just surviving at that. And I, within like all, all I wanted to do was eat. I just wanted to stuff my face with food, really good food. And I wanted to get out of the deprivation, deprivation, deprivation. Yeah. That I was in for so long. And so I went from calorie deficit to calorie surplus really freaking fast. And you know what I did? I shocked my system, wreaked havoc on it. And I lost all my progress really freaking quick. So I know what this feels like and I know how important this concept is to get right. And I have messed it up personally. I've messed it up personally with my clients. I see my clients mess it up for themselves. So I just like the why I'm amped up, like I can feel my energy right now. Like I am hot about this topic. I love this topic and I want you guys to be able to come out of this episode today understanding the misunderstandings and also understanding the common mistakes so you don't fall into the trap of what I have been in, what I put my clients in when I was, you know, naive years and years ago and what, when I was basically going through the same thing and then what I've seen my clients fuck up on even though I was basically being like, yo, you gotta do it right. This is so important and I'll tell you when I get to um, the common mistakes 
there's a really important aspect in that one that you need to understand to get this right. So let's first talk about the misunderstandings. The, comp, the, the thing about reverse dieting, this is where a few people trip up on, is misunderstanding number one is rever- they think reverse dieting equals rapid fat loss. Meaning a lot of people think that when they get into the start of the reverse dieting, they'll immediately, they immediately think they're going to see more fat loss. And let me, hear me out. That can be true for some people. Some people might lose a little more fat during the early stages of reverse dieting, but that's not the main goal. The primary purpose of reverse dieting is to maintain your fat loss or weight loss while increasing your metabolism so that your body can handle more food without packing on pounds. It's more about the long-term sustainability that comes from this than the immediate fat loss. So it's, I don't know if like you've heard that or you know, maybe you've worked with coaches that are, that are like, reverse dieting is like magic because you're going to lose more weight and you're going to lose more fat. Dude, it ain't the case for everybody. It totally depends on you as a human and your body and how it will work with increasing more calories, depending on how much stress you're under X, Y, and Z. So a lot of people think that if they start the reverse dieting, my coach told me I'm going to lose more weight. And it just sets up an unrealistic aspect of reverse dieting. So that's the first misunderstanding. The second misunderstanding is that you can increase your calories quickly. So another, like if you, if, If you can dramatically increase your calories right after dieting, that is a common misconception because some people want to jump straight from 1,200 calories to 2,000 calories, and that's where they get in trouble. So misunderstanding is that you can increase your calories quickly. That's not the case at all. That's where you start wreaking havoc on your metabolism. That's where you start gaining all the weight back way too quick. The thing to understand here in this misunderstanding is that reverse dieting is a slow, methodical process. You're aiming to increase your intake by small increments. I'm going to talk about this and how you can do it correctly. But your your aim here is to just increase intake slowly, methodically in small increments week after week or even bi-weekly. And this slow pace is so freaking important because it allows your metabolism to gradually adapt rather than going into storage mode and rapidly gaining fat. That is exactly what I did. Now, it doesn't have to be that you were in competition prep. It can still be that you were just focusing on fat loss for a period of time and you lowered your calories from 2,000 to 1,200 or 2,000 to 1,500. And now you want to reverse diet because you saw some results with it. Now you just want to like get your metabolism to adapt and take a little bit of a break. That's what reverse dieting is is usually implemented for too as well. Um, but you don't want to dramatically increase your calories right after dieting, which a lot of which dieting, which a lot of people think that they can do. You can't. It's small, it's slow, and it's methodical. The last one, and I think this is really important. I'm also gonna talk about this one and the mistakes too as well, I think. The last misunderstanding is that you don't need to track closely. Some people think that once they finish a fat loss phase, once they finish a competition prep, they don't need to track their intake as closely during a reverse diet. This is a huge freaking mistake. And first off, the person, one person that comes into my mind that did this so right and I was so admired by her because it was one of her first shows and she learned this like this. I got to give a big shout out to Mac, Amanda Mac. You know you did this right, girl, and you did a really good job at it. And I was super impressed when she came into town. She's one of our team members in Warrior Babe, and she came to town, and she had just gotten done a show a week prior, and she, like, with a group of people, everyone's doing their thing, eating whatever they want, and she's like, I planned this out. This is a part of my reverse, and stuck to it. A lot of stuff, like small little, like one, two little bites of other things. But that was it. And I was like, damn girl, yeah, you're doing it right. That's so important. She was still tracking closely during the transition out of a caloric deficit to trying to get to uh, maintenance. 
Um, and that's the right way to do it. But a lot of people think that they can not track their intake as closely during a reverse diet. And that's a big mistake. And I've seen my clients do this. They kind of like get really lenient with themselves. They've done a period of time where they've been tracking closely for, for you know, 12 weeks, four months, six months, whatever. And then they ease up on themselves because they're like, oh, I just did all this, you know, and I, so I can give myself a little bit of grace. Tracking is still so freaking important during the reverse diet, if not more important than the fat loss phase, <laughs> because the, the increments in calories are small, but you still need to be mindful of how much you're actually eating. And so this helps you to stay on track and ensures that you're following the process as planned. If you don't track, you could easily like overshoot your calories and gain weight faster than you intended to in this aspect of the, of reverse dieting. So quick break. If you're finding this episode helpful so far, it would mean a lot if you could hit pause for just a second, leave a quick rating or a review or share it with someone who could benefit from it. Your support helps more women discover these tools to build muscle, lose fat and feel confident. Thank you so much for being a part of this journey with me. For another example, when, when you are tracking and you're doing these small increments, not really example, but a statement, when you're doing these small increments and you're actually paying attention and tracking them and you see your body respond in a certain way that maybe you need a little bit more time to adapt to that calorie increase, you're going to know exactly where you're at. So you're going to feel confident to know that, okay, this is where I need to sit for a little bit or if your body reacted too quickly and it's maybe getting a little bit more puffy or, you know, you feel like you're getting a little bit off the rails for a period of time, you can go back to where you were before making the caloric intake or uh, in the calorie increase. So for example, let's say you came out of the reverse diet, your first week you increased to hundred calories. I'm going to talk about this in a little bit. So just stick with me here on this example. It doesn't need to make entirely sense right now say the first week you increase 100 calories, the second week you increase 100 calories, the third week you increase 100 calories, but you're starting to feel like, oh, 300 calories over the last three weeks is a little bit much for my body. So, and I'm seeing the changes happen a little bit too quickly, but you're paying attention because you're tracking and you're also paying attention because maybe you're taking progress pictures still. And you're like, ah, I think I need to go back to where I was at week two and just sit at the 200 calorie increase for maybe two weeks. You only are gonna know how to do that if you're tracking and you're paying attention how your body responds. That's why that misunderstanding is so freaking important that you don't do and that you, you don't, <laughs> I always get tripped up on this because I'm a little bit dyslexic, but you have misunderstanding is that you don't need to track closely. You need to track closely in making sure uh, that you're, that you understand where you're at, how much you're eating and how your body does respond so you can ensure that you're doing it the right way. So misunderstanding number one. Reverse dieting equals fat loss, rapid fat loss, false. The misunderstanding number two is you need to increase your calories quickly, false. It's going to wreak havoc on your system. And number three, misunderstanding number three is you don't need to track as closely. You need to track. It's really important for reverse dieting because the increments in calories may be small, but you need to be mindful of how much you're actually eating. Because if you overeat, like even though it's small, 100 calories can easily turn into 200 calories if you're not paying attention to it. Okay, so those are some of the misunderstandings. Mistakes, somewhat similar, but I'm going to maybe dive a little bit more um, into maybe the details when it comes to the mistakes because there's traps that can totally derail your progress if you're not careful. So mis mistake number one is I talked about it in misunderstanding but it's increasing your calories too quickly. And I can't stress this one enough because the reverse dieting aspect, and this is what I said earlier, that I was going to talk about it in the mistakes. It requires, and I said it earlier, slow, methodical, you know, uh, process. The reverse dieting requires your patience. And I know none of you like to hear that word because you want results fast and you want results like yesterday. Well, newsflash when it comes to fitness and you getting the transformation that you want with your body composition, that requires a hell of a lot of patience. 
So I can't stress this one enough. The reverse dieting requires patience. One of the biggest mistakes that I see is people increasing their calories too fast because they're excited to eat more. Remember when I just told you that that was me? (laughs) You got to remember that you've put your body through a period of restriction. And so jumping straight to a higher calorie count will lead to fat gain for majority of the time. So just to nail this one on the head, stick to gradual increases and trust the process. Mistake number two is skipping the tracking process. Even though, and these, like, I'm repeating this for a reason <laughs> because These things, I feel like when I saw this question box on my Instagram story, these are the things that immediately popped into my brain when I was like, how am I going to go about explaining this and, you know, giving a long winded answer and sharing some knowledge and dropping some bombs. These are the two main things. Misunderstandings, number one, which was you don't need to track closely. The mistake is increasing calories too quickly. Uh, And... Mistake number two, wait, I just said that backwards. (laughs) Mistake number one is increasing the calories too quickly. And mistake uh, number two was you increase the calories too quickly. Mistake number two is, wow, talk about dyslexia and getting this a lot backwards. (laughs) But just stick with me. Mistake number two is sticking with the tracking process and misunderstanding there's there's misunderstandings and there's mistakes misunderstandings are basically the conceptual concept of not understanding the process properly and mistake is actually doing the thing and take like employing it the wrong way so that one misunderstanding was skipping the tracking process mistake number two is is or (laughs) jesus christ you don't need to track as closely. Mistake number two is actually skipping the tracking process. So even though reverse dieting can feel less restrictive than being in a calorie deficit, tracking is still so freaking important. I know it can be tempting, like I said, to give yourself a little bit of leeway in this phase to like eyeball your portions or assume that you're eating the right amount. But I can't, I really have to stress the fact that precision is so key here because I've seen some of my clients do this where they're eyeballing their portions and they're assuming they're eating in the right amount of food, but they were eating more than what their allotment of the increase was for the week. And that tacks on pretty quickly. Okay. This one, mistake number three is not adjusting your training. Reverse dieting isn't just about the food. So as you increase your caloric intake, it is so important to adjust your training too. When it comes to strength training, this becomes even more crucial as you bring in more calories into your everyday routine. You have to lift heavier weights because that helps to ensure that those extra calories are actually being used to build muscle rather than being stored as fat. So if you're reverse dieting, make sure that your workouts are aligned with your goals. Focus on strength, focus on intensity, focus on volume, focus on progressive overload. What's that saying? Basically, put your food where you're, put put your food where you're, no, that's not what it is. Think about when you are eating more calories, just think that it's fueling your muscles and it's going to, it is going to, if you're doing it the right way, or at least in my experience, like I felt more full after I put myself into a restriction and then was eating the right way and at, at the right increases, my body got more full rather than it got fat. That, does that make sense? So like I'm, my, my, the food, the increase in calories, the extra calories is going to the muscles rather than being stored as body fat. It's the best way I can actually put it. And the last mistake, I'm going to drill this one home. People make the mistake of expecting immediate results. Reverse dieting, as I said, being slow, methodical, patient, those are my words. It is a long game. You are not going to see drastic changes in the first couple of weeks, and that is okay. The goal is to slowly boost your metabolism while maintaining the progress that you've made. And I will tell you this, if you are listening and your coach is putting you into reverse diet, or maybe you're just joining the program and Warrior Babe War program in general, and you're like going from 200 calories to 1300 calories, 
really slowly, but you're like, I know I need to eat more food, but like your coach is giving you anchor small increments. I get it can be discouraging if you don't see immediate results or you're not getting the food that you want, but you need to stay patient and you need to trust the process because there's a method to the madness. We want to help your body adapt and adjust in your metabolism to slowly boost rather than wreaking havoc on your body, stunting your metabolism and losing progress that you've made. Or if you haven't been making progress, my brain, my brain just spirals here. Cause I'm thinking about the women listening to this, that maybe for the last five years, you've been under eating and you know, you have to eat more. The same method applies. Even though you haven't been seeing progress because you've been eating 1100 calories and we know we have to get you to 1800 calories. It ain't going to be a big jump. We got to gradually get you up there so we don't wreak havoc on your metabolism and we don't make you store more fat or store fat in general. So over time, when you do this the right way, you stay patient, you trust the process, you understand you're not going to see drastic changes in the first couple of weeks. Over time, your metabolism will adjust. And this is what gets so freaking hard and so discouraging for people is because they think that they're going to see immediate results on the physical side. But what's going on is like the immediate results are happening on the inside. And when your metabolism adjusts and you give it the time that it needs to adjust, you'll be able to eat more without gaining fat. Point blank. Okay. So with all of this that I've been saying and sharing with you guys, I hope that you're finding it helpful. I'm loving this episode so far. Now I want you guys to have some tactical takeaways to be able to go do this yourself. Or if you don't want to do it to yourself, do it yourself. You know where you can find us. This is what we do at Warrior Babe. This is what we pride ourselves on at Warrior Babe. And that's why a lot of people don't like that they're not seeing results in the first three months or four months is because we're, we're just focused on healing the inside. And then we know, we're confident we're going to get the results on the outside. But we just got to, you know, that's, that's what we pride ourselves on working with our babes too as well. Is like, they got this mindset. We got this mindset. How can we meet in the middle and work together? Even though you don't like it, but you got to trust the process. I always say, trust us now, believe us later. That's all I ask. Because there's a method to our madness. Okay? So, anyway. Now that we've covered a blend of mis- mis- misunderstandings and mistakes, let's focus on how to reverse diet the right way. So number one, step one, start by determining your current caloric intake, where you are. So this should be the amount that you've been eating at the end of the calorie deficit that you've been in, the fat loss phase, the competition. Maybe you're just starting from scratch. You have no idea. Great. Track for seven days and see where you're at. This is what we do inside of Warrior Babe. From here, you can begin to increase your calories gradually. What do I mean by that? Step number two, slowly increase your calories. You're going to do this and it depends on the individual. So if you're doing it yourself, I would err on the lighter side. You're doing it with a coach. We're probably going to push it because we have the ability to control it and we know what we're doing. But if you're doing this by yourself, I would say "Mm, begin by adding about 50 to 100 calories per week to your current intake. So if you're eating 1,200 calories, add in 1,250, 1,300. Usually when you're working with a coach, I'll push it to 150, 200. Everyone's got their kind. It, it totally depends on the individual you're working with. It depends on the mindset too. Because if I'm working with someone that I know is going to freak the freak out, if I'm bumping up 200 calories, I'm going to do 150 just to play with the mind. <laughs> just to make it easier. All right? And then... You're going to track your body's response over a week, two weeks, monitor your weight, monitor your energy levels, monitor monitor your performance inside the gym. If this is where I talked about earlier, if you're noticing like significant fat gain or you're noticing um, that you're feeling a bit more puffier or you're noticing that you feel a bit sluggish, then slow down the rate of the increase. If your weight remains stable, if your photos look good, increase slightly, right? Then you're on the right track. If that maintains or you're slowly seeing maybe your skeletal muscle go up, you're on the right track. So again, just to emphasize that step, 
start out by doing 50, 150 calories per week, monitor how your body is responding. And this is where you have to be accurate. This is where tracking is important because you can't just eyeball 100 calories, 150 calories. You got to pay attention to this and take it seriously. It's methodical, I'm telling you. And then if you feel like you're puffy or gaining too much, pull back, slow down the rate of the increase. Instead of increasing the next week, just stay the same. Um, if your weight is remaining the same and you're, you know, sl- increasing slightly in muscle, then you're on the right track. You know to stay stay there. Um, or you, you know that you can increase a little bit more the next week. Okay? So that stuff's really important. And that's where it's like you got to trust in your ability or you got to trust somebody else. Step number three is this is where you're going to prioritize your protein. So as you increase your calories, make sure that you're prioritizing your protein. So protein is the most important macronutrient for preserving lean muscle mass during reverse dieting. And it helps to keep you full. So you want to make sure that you're aiming for about one gram per pound of body weight daily. And so you're going to continue to prioritize the protein, maybe increase it as you're putting on a little bit more weight. And the rest of those that increase from calories should be coming from the the carbs and the fats. Number four, don't forget. So step number four, don't forget to adjust your training protocol with your reverse diet. Focus on the strength training, focus on progressive overload. As you increase your calories, your performance in the gym should improve. You should be feeling more powerful. You should be feeling more stronger. You should be able to lift heavier weights and build more muscle. And step number five is be patient. Please be patient. Please be patient. Please be patient. (laughs) Reverse dieting isn't a race. The slower you increase your calories, the more likely you are to maintain your results without unwanted fat gain. Stay patient, trust the process, and remember that your metabolism internally, even though you can't see it, is adjusting over time. And that's the most important thing to keep you aligned with the goals that you want coming out of a reverse diet. This is the beauty about reverse dieting. If you do it right, you can have results from your fat loss phase at say 1400 calories, 1500 calories, 1800 calories, wherever the heck you are. You can have results at eating less and like decreasing your body fat and getting to where you want to be. You can have those results And then you can maintain those results and still look amazing eating 400 more calories, eating 500 more calories, eating. And that is what this is all about, getting you guys to eat more food. And you can do it when you do this concept, this topic, the right way. It can be literally like mark my word. I say this so confidently. The reverse dieting can be one of the most powerful tools for maintaining your fat loss, for boosting your metabolism, for building long-term sustainability with your nutrition. Mark my word. Okay. But the key is to avoid all these common mistakes that I've talked about today, <laughs> like increasing your calories too quickly, like skipping the tracking process. There I am saying those two things again, because they are so freaking important. And to take a slow, measured, methodical, patient approach. Remember, this is a gradual process that requires patience. But the payoff is totally 100%, 1,000%, 1,000 million percent worth it. And over time, you're going to be able to eat more. You're going to feel better. You're going to be able to maintain your results without constantly worrying about regaining fat. Is that what we all want? We want to have a rocking body and eat more food? All right, my friends. Well, I hope you enjoyed that podcast. That was probably one of the one of my most favorite podcasts I've recorded in a freaking long time. And shout out to you guys on Instagram that dropped this in my in my little question box on what topics, concepts, knowledge, education that you want to learn that I can break it down. This has been a 32 minute episode because this is worthy of a long conversation. And I hope that you guys gain some insight, some knowledge, some understanding, so that you can deploy on it and put it into your life and into your fitness journey, okay? Love you guys, appreciate you guys. See y'all in the next episode. 
Hey, really quick, before you go, I have one small favor to ask. If this episode brought you value or sparked something in you, take just a moment to hit that review button. Your rating and review make all of the difference, helping more women discover the tools they need to transform the fitness and their confidence. It takes less than a minute, but it can change the path of someone else's journey. Thank you so much for leaving that review. I appreciate you so much.